Hey everyone, welcome back. So with uh, Onyx Shark coming out in a couple of weeks, I figured this is probably the update I should be most excited about, uh, given it's got the, the shark reference, right? So I wanted to talk through a couple of things uh, that I'm either hoping for in this update or that I'm kind of looking forward to Relic potentially addressing in the future. I have no insider information. This is just kind of like my thoughts. Uh, please, as we kind of go through these things, uh, if you have other thoughts or comments or ideas, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But with that, I will start with the one thing that we do know is coming in Onyx Shark, and it's some sort of infantry time to kill update. So in this case, there's been a lot of speculation. I haven't seen anything concrete. I know there's been some reference to bolt action rifles. I think what I would like to see here is that bolt action or semi-auto rifles like the Grand on the Rifleman do more damage to units that are outside of cover, right? So the current balance really favors assault or shock units, right? Um, guys armed with SMGs or the, the STGs. Uh, but I think there's a reason why in World War II and even now, you, most uh, infantry favor semi-automatic weapons over these close range, you know, fully automatic variants. And I think for a lot of people, it's really frustrating to see units kind of charging over open ground um, against the unit that is like properly positioned and in green cover. Um, and the unit that's charging them just like runs over the open, takes no losses, takes minimal damage, and then they get to point blank. And now they're able to force that short range fight and they just win. And it can, so it can feel very disingenuous to like have a good bolt action unit, put it in cover. And the only ones that really do well are like the, the elite, like, elite, like shock infantry, like Stoss Troopin, uh, the Aussies, once they're vetted up the Brits with the brand upgrade, et cetera, uh, or the Jaeger. So I think what I'd kind of like to see here is that all of these units that are using these like bolt action or semi-auto rifles get an accuracy bonus against units that are out of cover or some sort of like damage bonus to units that are moving and, and out of cover. And I think if they did this right, like if it only applied when you yourself were stationary, think like the initial Brit bonus when they, you know, they were in cover, so increased accuracy, increased rate of fire, or kind of the way coastals play right now. Um, I think what you'd end up seeing is a lot more positional play and there'd be uh, using a shock unit, like assault grenadiers, um you trying to get like uh the Gurkhas or the thompsons in a position it would encourage more positional play and a little bit like high risk high reward with those assault units so you'd have to use things like sight blockers to get on the flank use smoke to kind of close the distance safely and so that way it would feel a lot more intuitive when the short range unit actually closes within uh at full health like okay bam there it goes now the uh engagement turns the other way uh to do this, though, I would really focus on increasing the lethality at kind of like the mid range. At long range, you want units to be able to kind of kite each other, but not burn each other down. That would get kind of campy and frustrating. But at mid range, I think there should definitely be some risk in having Panzer Grenadiers just kind of run at rifles or an infantry section that are in cover, uh, you know, hold up shooting well. Um, I, the other thing here to, to make this effective, you'd probably have to speed up the cooldowns on the smoke barrages and, and the scout smoke abilities maybe give like the Falsher and Pioneers, the Panzer Pioneers or the Granat Buxa, maybe give them the ability to use smoke as well uh, to kind of add some smoke to the game. Um, you know, in, in 1v1s, maybe not as necessary because there's lots of room to flank, but in team games, uh, you need to use smoke to create those kind of opportunities because they otherwise don't exist with the, the lanes being so narrow. Um, and then maybe <clears throat> if you're going to have any benefits to yellow cover, maybe limit that as well to being stationary. Because uh, in the past, you know, especially in CO2 with a lot of the ground deformation, at the end of the game, everything's a crater, now everything's yellow cover. And so you have a unit that's like moving across several craters and getting bonuses as if they are stationary in cover, which uh, is a little cheesy. So that's those are kind of my thoughts in the infantry TTK update. Um, honestly, I think that the balance is in a, a decent spot right now. So I think minor tweaks are probably better than, than huge changes, but it would be good to see uh, assault units have to like there to be some downside to using uh, short range weaponry the only other thing uh like major mechanic that i kind of want to talk about right now that i think there's a potential for some uh you know maybe more uh recent kind of updates to or or near term uh are garrisons right and so I, right now i think like the ability to jump in and out of garrisons like, like the breakdown time especially for non-team weapons is a little too quick um, but the gar the benefits you get from being in a garrison, especially with like rooftop models, uh, is really pretty extreme. 
And so you think you get some of these buildings where like there's only two windows and you think like, oh, well, they can only shoot out of two windows at a time, but then they stand on the roof and they do a ton of damage. They get an accuracy bonus, etc. cetera. Um, when you let units hop in and out of garrisons that quickly, you're basically removing the ability to counter the garrison. So like flames and grenades and mortars don't have time to actually have an impact. So I would like to see there be maybe a little bit more of a delay uh, especially in like bigger buildings, if it's a three story and guys are on the roof, they shouldn't be able to exit the building in a half second, like some sort of extended, uh, garrison kind of interplay. It'd be difficult and kind of tricky to balance, but I think it would make it a garrison a little bit more like high risk, high reward. Like, yeah, it's a great spot for defense, but if you get caught out, you might lose this unit or take a bunch of damage. Um, so that's just kind of my other thought there in general, uh, from a balance perspective, like I, I've said before. I think the game is generally in a good spot. I think some balance adjustments can help keep the meta from being stale though. So even if things aren't 100% out of whack, I think kind of sliding or changing some things can make the game a little bit more interesting. Like the changes we saw to snares a couple of months ago made light vehicle play a little bit less oppressive and infantry heavy play a little bit more viable. I like to see something kind of along those lines. Uh, going faction by faction here, I think Right now, the problem with the Brits is they really don't need to choose a battle group. They get a lot of stuff available to them, non-doctrinal, right? They get non-doctrinal uh, heavy artillery, non-doctrinal late-game armor, non-doctrinal heavy AT, um, non-doctrinal lead infantry, etc. Like, they have all the options, plus withdraw and refit. So, uh, you know, in one in one v one, I think it's still kind of reasonably balanced, but in, in team games, when you're up against, like, quad Brits, it just becomes oppressive. Uh, and so I think maybe a relook to some of the abilities like withdraw and refit really stands out. Maybe lock that behind a battle group, um, maybe tone down the grant. I don't know. That That's I, I'm interested to see how Relic approaches that one, because I think the 1v1 balance and the 4v4 balance, like obviously don't line up. And I think it's most far off with the Brits right now. Getting into the Americans, I think that, like the irony for those of us who who pay attention to like World War II history is that um, the Americans really don't have that many great artillery options in the game when that was kind of our calling card back in the day. I, I think they need an, another non-doctrinal artillery option. So as an example, I would love to see the pack outs are available from tier four, like non-doctrinally. I think that'd be helpful. Um, and that would give them some late game oomph uh, from an artillery point of view where you're not just relying on an 81 millimeter mortar that really hits like a 60. Um, the A half track is really kind of underwhelming, which I'll talk about later. The 30 cal machine gun also really underwhelming. I don't need it to kill like people like crazy. I just need it to suppress. If you're getting a machine gun out, if you're teching weapon support center with the Americans, you're just using the machine guns to try to zone out. Um, and especially with some of the suppression, uh, buffs that the Wehrmacht infantry get, they can kind of just like run right past the 30 cal, which makes it kind of pointless and a waste of effort. So if you wanted to see some variety in the way the usf play i'd make the 30 cal just suppress a little bit better uh i think the rangers probably need to be behind more command points i know lots of people have issues with them i think if they didn't show up so early they wouldn't feel so oppressive and then you'd see people using them as like one or two squads of rangers as a true shock unit to kind of break things open rather than these blobs of five squads of them um, on the contrary i think the ssf commandos probably need to be available sooner Right now, it's minimum three command points to get them out. Uh, and so there are some interesting strategies you can employ with that battle group, but you need to be able to build the SSF commandos a little bit earlier. Um, as far as like a new battle group goes for the US, I'd say maybe look at the 10th Mountain Division, right? Some really kind of histo uh, cool historic precedent there for the Italian campaign. As far as ideas, though, like I don't know that I have anything super uh, crazy beneficial. It might end up looking a lot like a combination of Australian Light Infantry with Bersalieri and some of the abilities from the, the Special Operations Battle Group. Um, so, you know, to that end, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to combine existing units from other battle groups into a new one. Like, that could be cool. Uh, but I would like the theme of, like, U.S. Mountain Infantry because uh, they were pretty effective in the Italian campaign. And then finally for the U.S., I'd say, like, this came up in a cast a couple days ago, but... The support center timing can be kind of tough, kind of tough, and it forces the Americans into a kind of a semi-doctrine choice relatively early in the game um, that might not necessarily be necessary. So it'd be interesting if they kind of expanded that, maybe allow for a back tech or make some of the later buildings more expensive, but allow you to skip the support center, uh, etc. So uh, just to give more flexibility, so you don't feel like you have to lock in, or you don't see people choosing the infantry support center just because. 
Um, the DAC at this point, they they remain kind of like all over the place. Sometimes they're really, really good and really strong. Sometimes they really struggle. Um, their mid game, I think, is really strong. And, and their early game infantry, if you use well, can be really good. Uh, I find their late game to be like really reliant on the Tiger uh, just because the P3s, even with their upgrades, are really only useful in like large numbers. The AD8 is powerful, but it can be countered by uh, some of the allied artillery. Uh, and so maybe in a new battle group for the DAC, they add something like a Yog Panzer, um, you know, something that provides them some late game AT kind of capability, um, but that doesn't step on some of the other things. It, just the mobility, I think, would go with the theme. Granted, like, yeah, it, I don't, I actually couldn't tell you if Yog Panzers uh, were available in North Africa. I, I doubt they were just based on timing. And then for the Wehrmacht, um, I think Wehrmacht, you know, pretty strong kind of across the board at this point. I personally think Grens need to be taken down a notch just a little bit, um, but they're they're very useful right now. Uh, and so I think feel like Wehrmacht have the most options, right? They've got a lot of different infantry. They've got great team weapons. Their late game is really strong. I think they could also benefit from so, some sort of uh, like doctrinal tank destroyer, right? Like obviously you got the Panther with the mechanized doctrine, the Tiger with breakthrough. It would be cool to see something like a, you know, a tank destroyer uh, available in a, in a new battle group for them as well to give them the ability to kind of pair that with the Brumbear uh, and punch through some of the uh, especially the British army that's available in the late game but yeah I mean that's so that's really all I have for for kind of balance right now like I said I'm not a fan of big changes but I think little small tweaks here and there can at least change the style of the game just a little bit and encourage people to like use uh, more in different units and and really kind of have fun with the game the last thing I want to get at, um, I've complained about a little bit in some of the casts, and I, I know it's pretty common. Uh, I'm going to talk about the the skill planes, right? So I'm fine with the heavy artillery barrages, right? They cost a lot of munitions. You see the bright red smoke, and they're relatively predictable effects. Some of them, like the uh, the airborne bombardment, the carpet bombing, like that hits really, really hard. But you see where it's going to be on the mini map. It's devastating, but it's not game breaking. And there's counterplay available you normally have time to move or dodge the most egregious one is kind of the naval artillery bombardment it's basically in a flak 36 deletion tool but again right like if if you as the person being targeted are able to move your units around you might lose a couple of things but i think that's kind of fair that's that's reasonable devastating effect with the availability for counterplay the loiter abilities and and i'll include the artillery cover style abilities that where you kind of click the button and the game targets things for you and calls in artillery. I think they're, they can be a little tilting because they're too responsive, but the, the in-game overlay is not like lies to you sometimes. And then sometimes there's just no quick counterplay. Some of the first, you know, barrages or first strafing run arrives so quickly. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. I mean, you've seen this like in multiple casts, teams that are like evenly balanced will end up getting into an engagement and then a loiter shows up and just breaks the game uh, one way or the other. And it's a, it just feels a little bit cheap and that it doesn't feel as earned as when you set up an engagement with a flank, right? And you knock out the tiger with a couple of like, uh, you know, hellcats or you use a, a well-placed mine to set up an engagement the way you want. Like the loiter just kind of feels a little bit broken, a little bit like an easy button. So... I think, you know, I have a couple suggestions here, and obviously some of these are harder to implement than others. Um, at a minimum, and I think this is this is doable, is that loiters need to have like a longer cooldown between uses. Now, you really see this in team games where they can get kind of spammed. Um, and, and then also they really need to stay, their effects need to stay within the circle that is circumscribed on the map. Like it, no more of this chasing vehicles outside the circle for extra strafes. Um, it's just brutal and it makes it impossible to counter uh, and can be super, super frustrating on the receiving end. Um, I think one of the reasons uh, that they feel additionally unbalanced at the moment is because of the state of AA. So both Axis factions have AA vehicles that have a lot of utility outside of anti-air. Right, The Whirlwind also it's on a P3 chassis, so it's very durable, but it's really good anti-infantry. The flak filling is almost required for the DAC because of its ability to suppress and move around the map and help you maintain kind of control. But then when an allied air ability enters the field, they stop what they're doing and they target the airplanes. And they usually do a pretty good job of knocking down allied loiter abilities relatively quickly. Allied anti-air is just hot garbage, 
right? The Polston's worthless, both as an anti-air uh, and as an anti-infantry kind of vehicle. Like, I've actually built it in team games just for the anti-air purpose, and it does nothing useful. And then the U.S. anti-air half-track doesn't suppress, so it's, again, worthless against infantry and then does very little to the loiters. Um, so I think if they were able to balance the anti-air units available to both sides, then maybe the looters wouldn't feel so oppressive or so unbalanced. Um, I think, you know, in that case, maybe if you want to make the air support center more viable for the Americans, you add, remove one of the abilities and add like a P-51 counter loiter or anti-air ability where you can call a Mustang onto the field, right? And it goes in and tries to knock down Stukas as they're doing their runs. Um, you'd have to add some sort of counterplay or some sort of notification, uh, you know, to the Axis players, they would know, but I think that could be cool and help make the, the ASC a little bit more, more viable. My, in my ideal world, air units in this game and the loiters would function a lot like they do in something like war game where you get two airplanes available to you for a certain period of time, say 30 seconds, and you can direct their loiters, their strafes as if you have the ASC up, but they're very responsive because they're already on the map. Um, and then you can tell them to leave early if you want, if there is anti-air or if they run out of munitions that ammunition on them, they leave. Um, and then if they're damaged, right, the cooldown's longer, et cetera. But if you did that, then you could eventually give all factions access to some sort of air cover. And so you could have really dynamic, interesting air and anti-air play on top of everything else that's happening on the ground. Obviously, they're not, <laughs> that's not going to happen for Onyx Shark. I uh, I think there would have to be some sort of consensus and there'd probably be a little bit of a like, game rework to make that happen. But man, I think that would feel really, really good. Like, hey, my endgame ability, I'm calling two typhoons into the airspace. I'm going to use them to target this tiger at the same time that I push on the ground. Like, how cool would that be? Really difficult, but lots of counterplay available. And I think that'd be a lot of fun. So um that's it that's all i got with this uh please like i said if you've got other thoughts i know there are a lot of things out there um people delving into the forums but would love to hear what you think uh if you like these kinds of videos let me know i plan on doing a couple updates when the new patch kind of preview and the patch itself pushes so uh stay tuned here and there'll be more to come thanks